What's up everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. I just had the most amazing item come across my desk for repair and uh, I, I have to share it with you guys because I haven't seen one of these in probably two decades. It's been a long time, but the fact that they're still out in circulation just baffles me. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Zoll D900. And if you haven't heard of it before, there's probably a reason for that. It's like a 30 some year old defibrillator. Um, the last thing I can recall on this defibrillator, there is a recall from back in November of 1993 because it will not power on and charge up. That's kind of a severe, kind of a severe recall if you think about it. It's like you have one job and you can't even do that. But anyway, this guy was just freshly removed from, ser from service. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Zoll. D900. Okay guys, look at this champ. It's actually in really good condition considering. I mean like uh, everybody knows like these ECG ports right here, they always disintegrate. It's that, um, it's that type of plastic that they use on these things. But I mean, take a look. They're not cracked. It's in reasonably good condition. I mean, take a look. Strain releaser. You know, uh, so I believe that this, of all things, was sitting in a cardiac stress room. So that means uh, if you're on a cardiac stress monitor, which is a device that's got like a treadmill and you have to get to your max um, heart rate, well, this guy here is going to save you when you crash. And uh, I mean, it is a beast of a machine at 27 to 28 pounds, depending on the options. Um, it probably still turns on, I bet. But take a look. The buttons are in fantastic condition. Recorder, start, stop, ECG functions. Yeah, those are obviously the uh, rubber type of uh, buttons, the, the rubber bubble buttons. So it doesn't power on. I checked the battery and the battery is replaced in 2020 this was replaced in 2020 the battery I could not believe that they're still making batteries for these insane market value on this guy right now I've seen them for sale for 350 to 500 dollars that is wild that you would buy a 30 pound defibrillator at 300 to 500 dollars uh, because there seems to be so many better options on the market Especially for this guy's real function, which is to save somebody. I mean, this one here has no modes for, um, it's got sync. You know, that's as close to, to uh, an assisted mode that you can get. I mean, that's it. Like, if you shock the heart on the wrong, there's no AED mode, no nothing. So, if you are not, like, completely trained on, on cardiac resuscitation, well, you could probably kill somebody. You know, all the latest um, defibs have an AED style function and they prefer that to be the default. This guy also has no pads connector. You notice that? It does have a connector right here. What a beast. So it does have a giant multi-function port. You can tell it's built like a tank. They did not build these to fail, that is for sure. That is a beast of a connector a very satisfying clump and let's see what is this what okay so the paddles are in pretty good condition these ones here should be uh, polished up because you can see that there are some remnants on there it has a PD mode so I bet you it attenuates the signal or something so it's got a PD mode and look at that in order to activate PD mode you have to kind of like put your thumb down near the activations that's so weird um, so there's a charge, and it, then you get a light saying, hey, you're good to go, and then discharge. Those are very satisfying, though. Very hefty-duty buttons, man. Oh, yeah. Heavy-duty, ka-chunk, ka-chunk type of buttons. The only thing that is really sketch is PD. Now, in my opinion, there should be maybe another button or something here for pediatrics. I can see why they push it off to the side because they don't want it to be accidentally activated because it probably attenuates or limits the amount of charge that you can do. 
I don't know. I'd love to tear this guy apart. I'll have to see if I have the ability to do that. But uh, see, you got a little bit of a grounding strip here. So that nullifies out the ECG trace. A little grounding strap there. And uh, one of the things I noticed about this paddle is there is an uneven surface on it. You can see some of the dings like it hit right there. Dings are not preferred whatsoever on paddles because they lift the surface area and create hot spots. So you'll have a not continuous contact patch. Now that might have been minimal, but still I, I would prefer that not to have any dings on it it's got a printer yep pretty cool take a look at this monitor on and then defib on and this one here is up to 360 joules so this would almost certainly be a monophasic defibrillator since the recall was from 1992 to 1993 that is a clear indicator that this guy is a late 80s design. Let's take a look at the back side. There's an auxiliary IO. I'm really kind of curious about that. What the heck? And kind of cool, they do have still ECG one volt um, peak to peak, I believe, um, output. Got battery in line circuit breakers. And take a look at this port. So that's for the banana plug. You can screw down an auxiliary ground wire. So odd. <laughs> Definitely so odd. I do dig the onboard court, the cable storage. That's super cool. Let's see. Let's see if I can flip it over without creating havoc. God, this thing is so heavy. Okay, on the bottom side we have hill. The lead acid batteries, I believe. Let's take a look. So there's two access panels on the bottom. One of them is for the battery compartment. There we go. And we can clearly see that this battery uh, was July of 20. That's wild. That is absolutely wild that you can still get those. And uh, this panel here, you take off four screws and this guy will lift off it's got a little retaining tab in the front and here you have a thermal printer pretty cool and this is the downside the bottom side of the the spool just absolutely crazy get you guys a view inside the machine still looks like it's in fantastic condition well, if it, it, if it lived most of its life in that room as a cardiac stress monitor, then it just sat there. I mean, because most of the people that you're going to cardiac stress, although they might have cardiac issues, I would assume that uh, you're kind of knowing if they're going to crash or something usually beforehand. So wild. Anyway, <laughs> that is the Zoll. Look at that. That old UHS sticker right there. Cool stuff. Anyway guys, I was absolutely enthusiastic when I seen that come across my desk and I figured I'd share it with you guys. Some of you guys like nostalgic medical equipment. I know, I absolutely do. So um, I just wanted to share that with y'all and um, I'm back in Houston again. I had a fantastic trip. I wish I could tell you everything about it. I'll explain it more later. Um, so I was out in St. Louis, but now I'm, I'm back in Houston and uh, I'm sitting here and playing catch up. And this is one of the items that was on my desk waiting for me to check out. So how crazy is that? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hey guys, on further examination, I kind of figured out a couple of the things that are going on with this guy. Uh, one is initially I could not see the port where the uh, external or temporary pads would connect. Does that port look a little familiar, folks? So we got this port down here, I assume is for the temporary pads. And then right here, you can control the beep to beep And I was really kind of curious about this PD. I was like, what the heck is that? Um, at first I thought it attenuated the signal or something, you know, but nah, this guy is definitely not that smart. So 
what we do is we depress the button on the side and that releases to the pediatric size pad. That's wild. Okay, and now it's been a while since I've, I've seen that design. So yeah, it's normally like this. You hit that and now you're on your pediatric pads, which is crazy. Um, but it's a good design, pretty good design. So when you do your PMs on these guys, you also have to disconnect the outer one, make sure that there's no corrosion between the two because your output for your adult is obviously gonna be much higher than the pediatric. And if you got corrosion right here on those little spring-loaded uh, metal sleeves that, that touch your inner pad, then you, sir, are going to have a hot spot and it could catch on fire or it won't discharge correctly. Interesting. Uh, there you go. A little correction and an update. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.